Okay, this video is brought to you by Brilliant.Work. If you like math, would like to learn how to solve interesting and challenging math questions, Brilliant.Work is the place for you to go. Be sure to use the link Brilliant.Work slash BlackPenRedPen. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to solve this kind of question. We are going to find the smallest positive integer so that when we divide this number by 3, we get a remainder of 1, and when we divide this number by 5, we get a remainder of 4, and when we divide this number by 7, we get a remainder of 6. Maybe you haven't seen how to solve these kind of questions in the past, but we can actually think about it. For example, can you give me an example so that when we divide this number by 3, we get 1 as a remainder? For example, 4 works, isn't it? Because 4 divided by 3, it's 1 with a remainder 1. And we can also have another choice, maybe 25. Because 25 divided by 3, it's 8 with a remainder of 1. So you can actually kind of think about it, but be sure the number has to satisfy all three conditions, okay? And as always, please pause the video and try this first. Okay, hopefully you guys all have a chance to try this, and I will show you guys the most systematic way to do this right here. And I'll first tell you guys what the answer is though. The answer to this right here is 34. And as always, that's it. Just kidding, I know I haven't done my job yet. <laughs> yeah, I know if I just do that to you guys, you guys are going to unsubscribe to my channel, which, you know, just don't do that, please. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, if you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe. Uh, yeah. Okay, I will go over the most systematic way of doing this kind of questions with you guys. This right here, it's all about remainders, right? And you will see these kind of questions in your discrete math class, or abstract algebra, or number theory, of course. Right, and maybe some of the computer science courses, they will also talk about these kind of things. All right, so I will have to introduce some notations, some languages, some terms along the way for you guys. I'll try to make this as detailed as possible. First of all, we are trying to find the smallest path, the integer, so that this happens. But I don't know what this is yet. Just like in your typical algebra class, I will just call this number to be x, right? So. I want x, when I divide this by 3, I get a remainder of 1. And as I said, 25 is an example. So I will just write this down for you guys on the side. Notice the following, okay? We know that 25 works because 25 divided by 3 is 8 with the remainder of 1. But we don't want to write down r for the remainder. Because what I say is 25 divided by 3. This right here, we know it's 8, we win the 1. This is one way to present the answer, right? But if you just put on R1, it's not really an operation. This is how we can change this into something that is much more useful. Well, we can look at 25 to be 3 times 8, we know that's 24. And we can just add 1 to get 25, isn't it? So 25, we'll write that as 3 times 8 and then plus 1 like this. Of course, they're the same thing, right? And now, pay attention to the following. This is the coolest part of this video for, for now. Right here, I can also write 25 and the remainder. They have some kind of connection. And we'll put down three lines. And this right here is what we call the congruent, right? Congruent. So spell it like this. It's not conjugate, congruent. Three lines. 25 is congruent to 1 when we divide it by 3. And the notation is that we put down parentheses and then we put down mod 3. This is called the modular arithmetic. Remainders matter, right? So these two right here are what we are going to talk about. So you know, this right here is, they go back and forth like this, right? So keep that in mind. Well, to make this into a more useful form is that, in general, I can say when you have x, it's congruent to some number a. And right here, we're just talking about integers and past integers in this case. So all the letters I'm using, they are representing integers, OK? When we have x, it's congruent to a mod whichever number. I just call that to be n. When we have this right here, we are going to write it. And they go together, meaning when you have this, you can write it down into an equation. When you have an equation, you can write it down into a congruence. Anyway, 
We can write this down as x. This x is just like the 25. We can say this is equal to, well, earlier you see, when I mod 3 right here, I do 3 times 8, right? This time I'm doing mod n, so I'll just put down n. But times what? Well, when I had 25, I could figure out the 8. But this right here is just x. I don't know what this is going to be. So in general, we'll just put down another unknown. And I will just put down k for it. k is also an integer. And in the end, we write down the remainder. We add a. And this right here is the most important part. All right? OK, so now here is the deal. This right here, we have the smallest positive integer x. When I divide this by 3, I have a remainder 1. So look at x and look at 1. I'm going to first write this down. x is congruent to 1. So they have the similar property, meaning that they will have the same remainder when I divide this by 3. So that's mod 3. Okay. So for example, I can write this down as 4 is congruent to 1 mod 3. Because 4 divided by 3, we get remainder 1. I can also write 25 is congruent to 4. Because when I divide this by 3, I get remainder of 1, likewise on the right-hand side. Okay, So all these kind of things. So this is just like the translation. And now I will just put this down right here as well. x is going to be congruent to 4 mod 5. Right? So let's put that down. x is congruent to 4 mod 5. And then we also do the last one, so which is x is congruent to 6 mod 7. And the idea is that we're going to solve this system of congruences right here, meaning we're going to find the x value to make all this work. And the truth is that we have infinitely many x, and we just want to find the smallest positive integer to make this work. All right? And I also have to make a quote right here. The quote is, I'm going to quote the Chinese remainder zero, which is says the following. Look at these numbers right here, 3, 5, and 7. These numbers are what we call the pairwise relatively prime. Well, you can also call them co-prime, meaning that you can pick any two numbers. For example, these two numbers, the greatest common divisor or the greatest common factor between these two numbers is just 1. Likewise, if you pick these two, the greatest common factor is 1. What well, divisor and factors are the same, okay? And then these two are also going to give you 1 as the greatest common factor. And when you have this happen, the Chinese remainder zero guarantees you you're going to be able to find a solution, right? And of course, it's up to the modulo because you have infinitely many possible things after you add a multiple. I will demonstrate what I mean by that. So we can actually have the confidence that this right here is going to work, right? Hmm. Okay. And by the way, if they are not relatively prime, or well, pairwise relatively prime, uh, you may or may not end up with a solution. So it just depends on the luck for that. But anyway, now let's look at the first congruence. X is congruent to 1 mod 3. I will be using this definition so I can change the congruence to an equation because we still like equation better, right? So from the first one, I can tell you that x is equal to, and this is based on the first condition, we put down 3 and multiply by another integer. I don't know what this is yet. I'll just put down k for it. So for some integer k, and usually people may want you to write it down somewhere for some k in the integer world, you know, but just keep that in mind for this question so I can save some space for that. And then in the end right here, you add 1. And that's exactly what we're using right here. And you can look at this as an example. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I don't know why this has been bothering me. So let me just put this down in the red box like this. Anyway, now x is in the form of 3k plus 1. We can just do a usual substitution. We can plug in this into the second congruence so that we can make the connection. Now, this is just like the substitution, like the regular system equation. So I'm going to just do that right here from the second one. We will get 3k plus 1 right here. So 3k plus 1 is congruent 
because I'm just using this plugin to here, so this is still the congruent. And that's four on the right hand side. Now we are talking about mod five. And from here, our goal is to isolate the K. And the congruence and the equation, it's really, really similar. You can add whatever numbers on both sides that you want. Sorry, it should be only whole numbers, integers only, okay? And then you can multiply by whatever whole numbers or integers that you want. And you can subtract as, well as you want. Only division is trickier, so I will show you guys that later. Now, based on what I said, I can subtract one on both sides. This is legit. So I can tell you we have 3k is congruent to, this is of course 3, mod 5. Okay? And now I want to get k by itself. I will just divide both sides by 3. We have to do this carefully though. In this case, it's actually okay for us to divide both sides by 3. And now I'll put that down right here for you guys first. And I'll tell you guys why. So cancel this out, I get k is congruent to 1 mod 5. This right here works. I will just indicate that right here. It's because the greatest common divisor, if the greatest common factor of the number you're trying to divide on both sides, which is 3, and the number that you have inside of this right here, like the mod whatever, if the GCD of these two numbers is equal to 1, it's okay for you to divide this on both sides, right? This is the deal. Well, let me just show you guys an example that you have to be careful. We cannot divide whatever numbers that we want on both sides, right? You have to really be careful. Check the greatest common divisor. Let me show you. For example, 6. This right here is congruent to 10. Well, if you just put this down, it doesn't really make sense. You have to tell me what we're talking about, right? Well, let's talk about mod 4. You have to indicate that. Well, why? Because 6 divided by 4, we get remainder 2. Likewise, 10 divided by 4, we get remainder 2. So these two numbers are congruent. But if you divide this by 2 on both sides, on the left-hand side, we get 3. On the right-hand side, we get 5. And if you talk about the mod 4 right here, 3 mod 4 is still 3. 5 mod 4 is 1. Unfortunately, this right here, they are no longer congruent. And the trouble, as you guys can see, is that 2 and 4, they do not have, they are not relatively prime. Okay? So, I will prove that to you guys in the following video if you guys would like. Anyway, now we know k is congruent to 1 mod 5. Well, I want to work with the equation, right? So, we can use this again. This time, I'll write down k is equal to 5 times some other integer, which we don't know what this is yet. I will just put down l to be an integer. And then, I add this one, right? So now, you know that k has this form, 5l plus 1. Well, well, I can plug in back to here because fundamentally, I'm still trying to find out what x is, right? So now, from equation number 2, we have a really nice information. x has to be in the following form. We still have the 3 in the front, but now the k has to be in this form, namely 5l plus 1, like this, and then plus 1 after that. And I'm going to erase this right here. This now is just a regular equation. You can do this in your head or something to simplify x is in the form of 15l plus 4, right? So at the moment, that's what we have. And now, we have to use the third information. x is congruent to 6 mod 7. x has to be in this form now. I'll just plug in this right here to this x, right? So I'll do this right here. This was from number 2. So I will do this right here. We are saying 15L plus 4 is congruent to 6 mod 7. And this is from the third part, right? And now we can just do our usual business. Let's subtract 4 on both sides. Now, here is the deal. What you can do now is do 15 divided by 7. We get 2 with the remainder 1. 
So you can just actually kill this number, okay? You can actually kill the 15. You kill the 15 to be 1, okay? 1L is congruent to this right here. You make it stay because it was less than 2 anyway. Mod 7. So even though you have the 1 times L, even though you have the L, but you can still just do the modulo 7. You can still just mod the 7 to the 15, right? So once again, it's like this and just model 15. That's actually the jet as well, right? So yeah, one, once you have one L is congruent to two mod seven, you can do this again. L is equal to seven times something else. Uh, L, I will just use M, which is also another integer, plus two. So in the end, you see this right here, it's the form for L. So from number three right here, right from the third part right here, I can plug in 7m plus 2 into this L. So we have 15 times, let me just write this down, 7m plus 2. And don't forget, we still have to add a 4 after that. So what we're saying is that x, with all these three conditions, it has to be in the form of so 15 times 7 is 105. And notice that 105 is the this common multiple of 3, 5, and 7, you just multiply that, right? Because they are pairwise relatively prime. And then you put down the M, okay? And then, of course, you just do the usual business. 15 times 2 is 30, plus 4, we get plus 34. So what we're saying is that X has to be in the form of 105 times M plus 34. And if you want the smallest past the integer, you let m to be 0, so that you actually just get 34 for the answer. And with that, this right here is actually it. You let m to be 0 right there, you know x will be just 105 times 0 and then plus 34 to get the smallest answer, okay? And if you will add, if you just plug in m is equal to 1, you can check this on your own. 139, because 105 plus 34, so you get 139. It also satisfies these three conditions, okay? You can check that out on your own. You can plug in whichever integer that you want for the M. So this right here is an example on how we solve the system of congruence. And this is number theory, which is really, really cool. So I don't just like calculus, I like a lot of math, of course. And if you like a lot of math, just like I do as well, be sure you guys check out Brilliant.Work and use the link Brilliant.Work slash BlackPenRedPen. Over there, you can seriously find a lot of interesting topics. They have great problems of weak questions for you guys to try, for you guys to think about, for you guys to participate, okay? And you can also kind of just score and kind of just keep track of your progress. And you can also join their community page and you can discuss uh, the solutions with other people from the whole world. It's an excellent place try that. And be sure you guys use my link, brain.work slash blackpenrepen, because if you would like to sign up for their annual premium subscriptions, use that link that will give you guys 20% off discount for the annual premium subscription. And that's the one that I have right now as well. And in the end, you know, I'm going to give you guys a problem for you guys to think about it, and you can leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. But as always, hopefully you guys like this video, and that's it, legitimately, this time, right?